Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and I am coming at you with the first deck tech that is going to be with the new balance patch and expansion of World at War Global Conflict. For today, we're kind of actually revisiting a deck that I've done previously, and that is Soviet Self Damage. Several months ago, I did a video on this deck archetype with the change to 34th guards when that was initially reworked but i did it with a soviet british uh deck because the british offered a large amount of healing which was to help offset the damage no other nation really had as much healing as them and there wasn't really a reason to go into any other nation because there weren't payoffs However, that has changed. The recent release of Sunrise Division has allowed the deck to actually go with a Japan ally. Because not only on top of Sunrise Division, but we also have the Type 137mm. And this means that we have 7 additional cards that will reward us for getting low on life. This makes self-damage much more consistent, and overall, I think does significantly improve the deck because we have a lot of powerful tools once we get below that threshold and we can consistently find them. If you are enjoying content such as deck techs and other related cards content, make sure to like and subscribe. And then let me know down in the comments below uh, if there's a specific deck that you would want me to look over. I'm always open for suggestions, uh, but that stuff all helps and make sure you don't miss out on any of this content. But otherwise, let's just kind of go over my current list. And I will admit up front that with the expansion only being out for a day or two, I've been playing a whole bunch of decks. You can see I have upwards of six decks, plus many I've deleted before. So I haven't had an ample amount of time to test this. So, And everybody's testing stuff. So there's definitely room for refinement, I believe, in this deck. And pretty much any deck tech that comes out in the coming days. But I wanted to share this because it is honestly quite fun. There's some real power here uh, if you play it right. And you can even match up against some of the higher tier decks and out-tempo them. But anyway, let's start talking about the card choices. So first off, we have Zukov. Zukov is really here just because we have a lot of Soviet infantry that generally get discounted by Zukov to cost nothing or one credit maybe. I would say that you don't want to play Zukov turn one but instead you want to save him till around turn four or five. The reason being is that at that time generally any infantry you draw with the Soviets you'll be able to immediately play on that same turn. If you play him too early, you run a high risk of drawing something like a 6-credit infantry unit, not playing it, and then the discount goes away. So Zukov is sort of a mid-game tool, but helps you to power out a large infantry unit uh, relatively quickly in the game, and gives us a little bit of extra draw. We then have the 329th Engineer Battalion. The 329th serves as actually a very important tool in this deck, because although self-damage is obviously about getting itself hurt and notably below 10 health for the Japanese cards, we do need healing. Like, that is un undisputable that we need the ability to heal ourselves and protect ourselves so we don't just get murdered by something like a Japan aggro deck or various other aggressive lists. And that's where 329th comes in. You don't want to play him out too early. You want to save him until you feel like you've played out most of your various effects like Sunrise Division or 34th Guards. And then after that, play out 329th and you'll be able to then hopefully heal back up and recover some important health to not be too low on life and die. It's a very fine balance, and sometimes it is entirely correct to just never work for your uh, various low health effects, like against a very aggressive Japan aggro. I would generally put 329th out and just heal and just try to outlast them, rather than trying to like go to 10 health against like a Japan aggro deck that is going to murder you with Sheedan. So, can depend on the matchup a little bit, but healing is absolutely crucial, and 329th is one of the best at it. We then have Red Dawn, and this is probably one of the biggest reasons that 
self-damage functions. One credit to deal three damage is a very powerful effect and is enough to pretty much kill anything in the early game. On top of that, when it hits our HQ, three health to our HQ is actually very nice. It gets us very low on life very quickly. And it's probably one of the best enablers to put yourself below 10 health. And yet, it won't let you be murdered because you are also generally going to be killing some enemy unit with this. Plus, on top of that, the ability to just add from the people to your hand otherwise allows you to essentially have a non-damaging variant of this should you start running out of life and not be able to play Red Dawn. It's a very flexible card, and notably against a lot of aggro decks, From the People's really good at killing a lot of those annoying one-drops like Swordfish, Humber, Red Devils, etc. It's a very effective tool, and I would say probably one of the strongest self-damage cards in the game at the moment. Very, very good. Then we have the Tried and True Bloody Sickle. It's self-damage, it's card draw, it's a ping, it's kind of a staple of almost every Soviet deck that has ever existed. Not a whole lot to say. If you're playing Soviets, you often need a very good reason to not be running four Bloody Sickles. They work very nicely in this deck. We have the 845th Rifles. This is another element of healing within this deck. Being able, The 845th Rifles is notably quite useful because it allows us to sort of take the edge off of our self-damage cards. What I'm talking about is that because they heal based on the damage the 845th Rifles offers, we can use stuff like Bloody Sickle on our 845th, and although we take the damage from the Sickle, the 845th will immediately heal us for it. And this isn't always something that you want to do, but if you're running out of life, you can do stuff like this in order to conserve your health total. Uh, stuff like Red Dawn also can be used on 845th, and this will allow you to take that damage without actually losing the health, which is mostly important for 34th guards, but it's a nice synergy to consider. But the bigger reason we run 845th is that we are looking to have more healing, and the 845th does that, generally offering us 3 to 4 health, uh, and on top of that, offering an early game play. It's overall just generally quite flexible. There are some times it dies to hard removal, but generally people aren't spending their hard removal on a 2-3, and that means that it's quite useful. I also like it because it is able to offset uh, like enemy AoEs. So for example, something like Strategic Bombing or Manhattan Project, which would otherwise deal like 3 or 6 damage to our HQ, 845th completely negates that damage to the HQ, which is very nice in order to make sure we don't run out of health too quickly. Also can be very good against buffed up units. Uh, you can trade this into something that say has like 5 or 6 attack, you get a big bo health boost, and then hopefully you're able to kill it off with other cards in order to, you know, recuperate your health. Moving on, we have the Yak-7. The Yak-7 is a very solid card. Essentially, it's a 2-drop that every time it sticks around, we get an extra card draw, and we get a ping on our HQ. This is very effective within the deck. I generally just kind of slam this out as soon as I draw it, and if the enemy answers it, uh, well. But otherwise, we get to draw a card, get a little bit of a ping on ourselves. It helps us just keep the energy moving of the deck by giving us more card draw, while also offering us the potential of repeating pings to our HQ to lower our health. Then we have probably one of the biggest cards of the deck, and that's the 456th Rifle Regiment. This card is something that I think is still extremely powerful within the meta, or just in the deck, or whatever you want to say. The reason being is that this is a 1-3 infantry that if the enemy does not attack even one time, it becomes a 2-4 guard. And a 2-credit two 2-4 guard would probably be run in the meta. It is quite good. Add on top of that the ability for us to use Red Dawns and Bloody Sickles alongside them, and it's very easy to see this reach 3-5 or 4-6 in terms of stats, which for a 2-drop is kind of insane. Very good on the defensive because it has that guard on it, 
but also very, very strong because it's a continually growing threat that is naturally feeding into as we naturally ping ourselves down. I've had games where I've blown people out because I play 456 on turn two, and then on turn three, I do something like bloody sickle, bloody sickle, and move this into the front line, and they don't have an answer to a 3-5, and even if they did, I have a lot of other tools to back it up. It's a very strong card and can be very good at pretty much trading into most things, especially when backed up with our removal suit, and it's just a very, very solid card overall. Then we have Sunrise Division, which was the new card that is allowing us to uh, kind of build with a Jap Japanese ally. Uh, it is a 2-credit 9-9 when we're below 10 defense, which is massive. It's very, very big. Uh, and as a two, without that effect, it's a 2-credit 3-3. Three, three. Not amazing, but it at least trades into early things if we need to drop it on turn 2. Depending on the deck you're facing, I would consider against like aggro just honestly playing this as a 3-3 three, three, just to have more bodies on the board, especially if you don't have anything else to do. But if you're playing against like slower decks, it might be okay. It's generally better to wait until you can make this a 9-9. The way this deck generally wins is by having a big turn where it plays out several massive infantry alongside whatever it already has on the board and kind of just overwhelming the enemy because you're too big to die to board clears, yet single target removal is not going to deal with everything. And we'll see that as we get a little bit further in this deck. But the Sunrise Division has added a lot of power to that. And 9-9 just trades so well into like literally everything. It's a very, very good card in self-damage. Then we have the Type 137mm. The original self-damage effect, or the one that was originally giving Japan this effect was never really worth it on its own. It wasn't strong enough. A 2-credit, two 2-3 two, Blitz artillery is definitely good, but it was not worth building around. However, the release of Sunrise Division means that we have now this and Sunrise in order to build our self-damage package around. And this is why I ended up going with Japan. The Type 1 is quite good for a number of reasons. It can either serve as a way to recover on the board, most notably against aggro, if you play out a couple Type 1s and are able to, say, kill off units in the front line and have several 2-3 artilleries. If they don't have removal or they can't close the game out immediately, the Type 1 will generally lock down the board or at least give you a moment to find guards and put them down and store to, and recover. But the Type 1 also has the benefit of its Blitz artillery. It can come out of your hand and immediately attack the enemy HQ. I have legitimately won games through the use of a couple Type 1s to deal like 4 or even 6 damage from hand to the enemy HQ as a finisher. It's overall a very nice card as a supporting element. I definitely think that like, as I said before, Sunrise was the most important element, like the one that really was worth building around, but the Type 1 helps that a lot by just being generally quite flexible and overall quite useful tool. Then we have the 61st Infantry Resonant. This may seem like a bit of a strange card, but the reason we're running the 61st is that this deck needs card draw, and it also needs guards, and the 61st is one of the few units that really provides both of those effects. Now, 4 credits for 4-4 four, four guard is not the strongest stat line out there. It's serviceable, but again, the simple fact that it is a guard that also draws us cards gives us a nice dual role type card as we are already stretched on deck slots. We're running all three of them in order to make sure we always have a good amount of guards out because this deck does definitely rely heavily on its guards to make sure it doesn't get killed for hurting itself so badly so the 61st plays well into that and then that extra card draw is making sure we don't run out of cards in hand which is something that this deck can do uh, especially if it's committing to a big play so the 61st just helps add on to us not running out of stuff we also have first rifles in the deck not a whole lot of like synergy, but the first rifles is two guards in one. 
it's just a lot of stats for a four drop and you have two bodies so it's a sticky guard and it's just overall a really good unit like there's not a whole lot to be said about it it's just very very good and just very flexible overall five-year plan is probably the biggest enabler of self damage five credits to draw five cards but you take five damage is crazy uh, five credits to draw five is insane and the fact that we're able to take that five damage and turn it potentially into a benefit makes five-year plan probably i would say the strongest card of this entire deck i find that when I lose game, it's probably because I didn't draw five-year plan. And when I win games, it's because five-year plan has given me a full hand of cards to play out and just kind of go off from there. It's extremely, extremely strong. And I would say it is irreplaceable in the deck. If you don't have five-year plans, if you want to play this deck, I honestly say you need to craft them. Although, granted crafting for this deck might not be the best idea i don't expect this to be like a meta list it's mostly for fun but if you really want to play this i think that you have to have five years plans in order to make it work extremely good card probably the best one in the deck then we also have the kv1 1941 not a whole lot of synergy similar to the first rifles instead just a really good card the most notable thing with the kv1 is that it is burn damage it is able to help us reach the edge, like finish people off when we get them low on life. Or we can just play it out as a threat that they have to deal with alongside other things. The biggest thing is obviously it's burning the HQ every time they draw. So if they're desperate to try to stop our like big board of infantry, then KV-1 can make it very awkward for them to try to dig for answers. But this, combined with the Type 137mm, gives the deck a lot of from-hand damage. That means that we can often deal, you know, like 6 or 8 damage from hand, which means we can often set up lethal in a little bit more of a consistent manner. Then we have the 83rd Naval Brigade. These guys are offering us a bit of hard removal, which is useful in order to deal with a variety of threats, and also giving us a decent guard. The biggest thing is that we're able to combine this with stuff like Bloody Sickle or Red Dawn in order to make 83rd Naval Brigade activate, and overall it's just very effective at what it does. Blowing up enemy units and is generally just overall quite good. Then we have 34th Guards. 34th Guards was the original thing that made me build this deck and is still quite good. A zero credit six six guard is or a zero zero credit six six infantry is quite good at what it does. And most notably, when combined with Sunrise Division and Five Year Plan, can mean that on turn seven you can potentially draw five cards and then play out like three thirty fourth guards and a sunrise division. And your board goes from like not scary to oh my god, how do I deal with this? And I've absolutely won games from 34th Guards being free and just being a tempo swing alongside stuff like Sickle and Red Dawn and our various other tools. The free 6-6s six in the mid game helped to give this deck some uh, tempo swings that it would otherwise lack, which might have otherwise made it too slow. So the 34th Guard is definitely, I think, a good addition to the deck. Then we have the Great Patriotic War. Great Patriotic War is actually a really useful card in for two reasons. The first reason is obviously to set the enemy low on HP. If we have something like a Sunrise Division in the front line, and we play Great Patriotic War, we instantly send the enemy to 3 HP. If we have any other unit alongside that that can attack, we can often kill people in one turn, almost guaranteed. That is alone quite powerful. However, the other benefit is that Great Patriotic War gives us a very consistent way to manipulate our health. There are times where you will put yourself low on life and the enemy starts beating you down. They're burning you out with something or they've hit you down to like two or three life. Great Patriotic War is a way to stabilize by setting our HP back to 12. This means that we are able to overall 
re remain alive in the game and also setting the enemy down to 12 which puts them on a cluck but there's the other side which is also that sometimes our healing goes down and we start suddenly running into the problem where we kind of need to be below 10 hp in order to do stuff and greed patriotic war allows us to do that by putting us to 12 and the enemy to 12 and then we just simply go ahead and like use one red dawn and we're below 10 and we can start playing like sunshines and type ones out it's a very nice card that i think is definitely also quite important to the deck simply because we need it's a great way to manipulate hp on both hqs and that is something that the deck appreciates a lot and then the final card I have for now is Winter Offensive. This is a board clear that can burn the enemy for four and also pings our HQ, setting up uh, like Sunshines and 34th Guards. Very nice to have a board clear, uh, a big board clear like this, as it gives us a way to recover if the enemy has built a big board and we're struggling to come back. Uh, most of our units are also big enough that they can survive the winter offensive and then do stuff like move into the front line. That is overall a very nice effect. And overall, it's just a very useful card. In terms of things that I've been testing out, there are definitely a few things. Most notably, I have been trying out the... T80 and the T80 was does good in some versions but I also find doesn't always come into effect and honestly I have not been too impressed by it we are an aggressive deck but our aggression often comes in the mid game after we've kind of set up control the T80 comes down and then generally just trades into one unit and deals us two damage although that's not bad I would honestly prefer to run something such as the SU-76 because it's a much bigger stat line for only one credit more and it's a deployment effect so we can more actively use this to say get us below 10 and then go off with it. The T-80 just doesn't really do that. I've also tested out 15th Motor Rifles and this is a card that actually does also have some good use. Being able to block enemy burn on our HQ is quite nice, and it is also a guard, so it gives the deck some additional survivability that I do appreciate. I just simply kind of ran out of room for it. There has also potential to try out various other guards, stuff like the BP-43 Armored Train, although it doesn't add a lot of synergy to the deck, could potentially fit in just because it's such a big durable guard you could also try out t60s which doesn't have a lot of synergy again but does give you a big blitz tank which could give you more reach in the deck while also giving you guards so you could see some nice durability or survivability added to the t60 through the t60 if you wanted that Beyond that, the last card that I have been looking at is potentially the ISU-152. This w does seem like an obvious decision, which might be true, but the, pro the one problem I have with the ISU is that we don't... Although we have a fair amount of pings from Bloody Sickles and Red Dawns and some of our smaller units, the big problem is that we also generally have a lot of large units on the board, and... We really don't want to kill them, but at the same time, the ISU forces us kind of to do that. I've played with the ISU, and I think that there definitely is a strong argument, especially if the game slows down and there's more decks like Ramp running around. But in the current aggressive meta, I have found that the ISU has just been unreliable, so I ended up cutting it for the KV-1. But if the meta were to potentially slow down and we need multiple board clears, I think the ISU would be a good inclusion. The Japanese side, the really the only there's only one or two things I would look to. The first one would be 33rd Recon, which gives us a proactive turn one play and works well with Bloody Sickle to give us more card draw. This is a generally powerful combination. 
And the same goes for stuff like Scouting Party, which is just essentially two 33rd Recons. This could potentially be a good addition to give us significantly more card draw, but it is a little bit slower. And we don't, again, don't have a lot of ways to controllably ping it. If we were running something like Winter Warfare, then we could indeed make use of that. Although I don't personally use Winter Warfare because I don't think we have enough draw to really make use of this. And I find that Red Dawn and Sickle are often enough pings. But those are two options that you can make use of. Beyond that, there honestly isn't a whole lot. Edge of the Empire is a new card that could serve as card draw also. And there are times that you do kind of run out of cards in hand. So Edge of the Empire could allow you to dump your hand and then two credits to draw three to make sure you don't like completely like flatline at a certain point. So that could be an option to try out. But other than that, there's not a whole lot on the Japanese side that I don't already have in the deck. Sendai could be hard removal temporarily, which could work, but otherwise there's not a whole lot here. So that's the deck list. In terms of a mulligan, I would say that the best ways to look for, or the best things to look for are generally the 456th Rifle Regiment. Uh, I think these are just one of the best two drops in the deck. I would also look for stuff like Bloody Sickles, as they are always good, but also Red Dawns. A single copy of Red Dawn will save you a lot of effort. After you get... If you have a 456 rifle and a Red Dawn or Sickle in hand, I would probably look to keep something like Card Draw, like 61st or especially 5-year plan, as long as you know you're not playing against like a hyper-aggressive deck, which you might want to look for like your healing, like 845th otherwise. But that is the deck tech. Let's show you a few games to see how it plays. And this, again, one last time to point out is that this is just at the start of a new thing. So we're going to see some probably weirder decks out there. People are going to be trying out some of the new cards. So we're not going to run into as many meta decks, although maybe we'll run into some uh, like Humber decks and we'll see how we do against them. But anyway, let's jump into it. Alrighty. Up against a German player. That means that it could very easily be a Humber deck. At which point I want to keep Red Dawn. I think I want to keep a Guard also. But the main thing is that I can immediately kill off a Humber turn 1. Which will disrupt his curve quite significantly. Alright. He's got double Parachute alongside it. That's, that's a nasty opener. I guess the question is, do I need a Red Dawn now? Probably not, to be honest. I can just save it for a later turn. But disrupting that is nice. Because it's going to really throw off his curve. He, get, he doesn't get an HS off this turn. That's going to really mess with him. And he's probably going to have to rely on these uh, parachutes doing stuff. If we could draw a Sickle to strip off the, the effect here, that'd be really nice. Yeah, look, he has very awkward, very uh, not a good turn for him. We're going to clear that away. Next turn, we'll play down 61st. Hopefully, can trade into the 5th Parachute, and then we'll be good. Or maybe I just do 1st Rifles, because that's a more durable guard body, and it sticks around longer. I guess it depends. See, he's probably going to HS... I think first rifles is the better option here because he's probably going to HS this and then move it into the front line and attack for a lot. So I need to have multiple guards out in order to try to prevent this from happening. Definitely like one of the nastier high rolls. Uh, double parachutes like pretty disgusting. So my, hmm, I think it may be a good idea to actually get a 34th Guards out. The reason being is that he's going to attack directly into my Brynance, which turns on my Sunrise, which is going to be a strong way. I want to definitely get rid of that tank. 
I could play the guard out, but he just eats the guard, so I think I won my 34th out. And then next turn, I can, like, play out Sunrise, attack, trade this, and, you know, hopefully, like, set up. And then Great Patriotic War could stabilize. Wish I had a sickle to strip off that, uh, mobilize. If that was, like, only, like, a 2-2 two -two or a 3-3, three -three, I'd be feeling real good here. Alright, he's trading that down. But... Yeah, I think that's the best option. Yeah, it's really coming down to this one parachute. If this parachute dies, I don't know if he's going to be able to recover from that. Especially if I can draw, like, some sort of damage to, like, destroy the board or something. Like, he's got a decent amount of cards in hand, but I bet a lot of them are, like, HS and combined arms. So the fact that he lost that Humber and then lost his Panzer 38 makes it, uh, difficult for him to try to finish this. Although I gotta be careful, because, uh... Ah, uh, he's this... So he's gonna let the sunshine live, and he's gonna set me down to three, hoping that he can maybe close the game out through that. Trying to set up a kill through that. But he's used both paras. So... Definitely this ha this has to happen. And then I think I set this up. Or actually, do I just Great Patriotic War that heals me for 9? He can't deal 9. He'll deal 2 with this, and he can deal like 3 or 4 with this. I think Great Patriotic is the better option here. And then depending on how much he buffs it up, maybe this is a mistake. Uh, I guess we'll see. There's the buff. A sickle here would be fantastic. That would... That would seriously set him down to almost no life. But he's almost out of cards. This is his last play. He's got a trade like this. And try to somehow make this a kill. He could do it if he has, like, double combined arms or something like that. Alright. So he's played his hand... So I could type 1, attack and kill that, and play naval to kill off something like the HS, or the second para. And then he'd have to, because he can only hit me for like 7, but he could top the, let's see. I If I wipe the board here, that means that he has, he sets me down to 2 life. Am I willing to bet? How could he kill me? If it's the normal one, I don't think he can top deck anything that kills me outright, and then Naval Brigade ends the game. I think this is a risk. I could have taken this other ways, but he would have just been able to, like, eat my Naval Brigade otherwise. And if he top decks, like, a combined arm here, then he, like, could beat me. All right, we, I think we got him here. Uh, we just got to keep our HQ guarded. 
Kill that off. Play this. Immediately do that. Play out the, uh... The 329th. So even if he can kill off my naval brigade somehow, uh, he will lose. Definitely not moving the naval brigade. If he, for whatever reason, is running Comet in the deck, he will murder me from that. So definitely need to keep the guard up. And there we go. Whew, that is a close match. All right, we're going up against another Soviet player. I definitely like the Red Dawn. I feel like we should probably ditch most of this other stuff. A lot less Soviet decks. So I'm a little less familiar with exactly what they do. Could be something like tokens. Uh, could be another self-damage deck. That'd be quite interesting to see a... Uh... Hmm. Okay. A lot of discard coming out from him. That is bo that is pretty annoying. Yeah. Wish I had that red dawn still. Yeah, that's just annoying. Hmm. This is like a Soviet control deck. There were times I remember when uh, when I started playing way back, several years ago at this point, and I would play uh, Soviet Japan or Soviet German uh, control. Also, it did run discard. Also, uh, this is it's weird. Okay. Honestly, I feel like I just got to play out the fifth year plan because I don't want it to be discarded. I'm going to overdraw, but that's not always a bad thing. Well, I mean, it's never a great thing, but I would rather draw the four cards than lose that and not have a hand worth of anything. Five credits to draw four cards is still ridiculous, even if we're burning a little bit to do so. Get out one of our 34th guards. I'm going to try to force him to respond to the yak. I gotta be careful around the ISU 152, because a lot of my big guys will get murdered by that. Uh, but otherwise, the Soviets don't have a lot of clears to counteract. Alright, so he didn't do anything. I have a feeling there's a countermeasure, but I guess I can't really play around it. Okay, there's not that. We'll just play two of those out. And I guess we'll just try to put pressure on him. He could go for like a winter offensive here. But honestly, that's fine with me. That gets me real close to uh, under 10, which will allow me to turn on Sunrise. Or actually it won't because he's going to heal me for 8. So that would actually not be the greatest thing for me right now. So I feel, I feel like I should take this slowly. He's trying, it feels like he's trying to bait me to like trade into this and then he wants to like winter to clear up the board. 
So I don't really want to give him this. I think this definitely happens, because I, if, I, if I'm playing around the board clear, I want to get rid of that. But the question is, what do I play afterwards? I think I just play out the KV-1 and leave it like this. I, I have a strong feeling I'm about to get board cleared, so I might as well develop... Okay. Into ISU. Okay, alright. Honestly, that's not that bad. Yeah, I'm honestly not too sad about that. I think I just play out first rifles, and then... Do I play Greed Patriotic War now? I take four damage myself, but I also set him very low. Yeah, I think, because it's so expensive otherwise. And I still have Engineer if this, like, starts going sideways and I need to, like, recover from that. But I feel like this should be fine. Oh, Partisans. Stealing my guard, I see. Okay, okay. So I'm going to... Yeah, I'll winter here. And we'll develop a, a sunrise. And then... Probably worth it to get it from the people. Now that we're so low on health. We have a pretty good hand going into this. I mean, he is two life. He's on two life. If he at any point takes damage... Or, well, now he's got the discard going. That's really annoying. So... Yeah, he's got a lot of hard destruction in there. A bit of an interesting deck. I have not seen Soviet German control in a very long time. Probably naval. No, he's playing that out. Okay. He's probably trying to find naval, is what I'm betting. Or he's looking for that. I'm gonna get rid of that right now. And actually, if I move this into the front line, then what this potentially does is it allows... it would If he trades into this somehow, then the 272nd will... Or the Sunrise will be able to go face. He must be really digging for answers. He must feel the pressure. Okay. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can't. Oh, that is annoying. That is actually quite annoying. Hmm. This is, this is, uh, this is getting close. Looks like I'm gonna have to figure out how to trade down an ISU if I can't protect the things, but... He keeps... Okay.
I am practically out of cards. I'm pretty much hoping that I can win the game in like one or two turns uh, at this point. Uh-oh. He's giving me health. So I have a chance. I honestly think, 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 I actually think that was a mistake on his part. Hmm. Yeah, I can't... If he has a Katusha, I can't stop him. I can't kill off the the KV-1 because of that heavy armor. So, if he's got a Katusha here, he just kills me. Nothing I can do about it, sadly. Got real close, though. Ah, no. Wait. <gasps> Wait a minute. We're alive still. Oh, my God. Oh, goodness. Oh, God. This is, like, way too close for comfort. Uh, I'm not even sure what's in my deck. Uh, if I had that... Uh, if he had not discarded that Type 1 earlier, if he hadn't discarded one of them, he'd be dead here. I'm not seeing how I get out of this, though. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for me to get out of this. Yeah. Dang it. Ah, darn it. I was so close. Shoot. Alrighty. Another German player. Very likely going to be Humber, so we need to find the Red Dawn right away. We get it. That's very nice. Umber turn one. We're going to immediately red dawn that. Now, depending on what he does, we probably will either run out the 845ths or the Sunrise. Uh, but that's going to hopefully throw off his curve quite a bit. That's one of the biggest things that you can do to stop combined arms is to throw off their curve. If you can kill that Humber turn one they get so, like, confused and feel like they're unable to do anything. Hmm. I think I just run Sunrise out here. Because if he's gonna, like, blitz a Panzer 2A into the front line or something, I want to have the best possible chance of trading into it. Hmm. So he's going to blitz something into the front line. There's the Humber. So he's probably setting up for the HS turn. I th I'm feeling like I should probably save Zukov until another turn, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to develop more stuff. I wish I had a sickle here. If I had a sickle, I could ping off this and set up a 2-4 guard. I think I should develop the 456, though, because that's going to make him... It's going to absorb one of the Humber swings, which will be quite nice. Yeah, there's that, and then he's going to buff it up.
So now I want to see if I can draw something with this. All right. So he's, I feel like he's very unlikely to kill me here and we're going to start gaining a ton of HP through that. Or, well, I guess he could just kill me if he has, like, a bunch of buffs. But, alright. Ah, but he does not realize. Overconfidence is his downfall. Ooh, these 34th guards are not helping out, but we have a ton of health now, so if we could just draw something like Red Dawn or something like that, we could probably just finish the game off here. This is not looking good. I guess it... Well, I guess if I draw Red Dawn... Ugh, all four 34th guards. Dang. So a Soviet deck. Well, Red Dawn's always a generally good keep. We'll just pass. We'll play Yak-7 on turn 2. And usually the Yak-7 will let us see what they're doing. Unless they do something turn 1, obviously. It's artillery. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I don't think he's going to be able to respond to the Yak. Immediately. So that's fine by me. This is a matchup where probably the 329 needs to come down quickly because we're going to get low on life uh, very quickly if we're not able to respond. I do wonder how he's going to approach this turn. Is he going to ping? He's going to set up a Greyhound. Okay. Ah, so he's going to just outright go for it. Well, he's spending a decent amount of resources to do that. So I'm going to develop 845th, and we're just going to immediately red dawn the Greyhound. Lower that damage output for the turn. Hopefully we can draw, like, a Sickle or something. That'd be a good pull to get off of Sickle. We'll guard up. That's a very nice draw. And a five-year plan. Ooh. Question is, do I develop the other 845th or do I get down the engineer? If I put down the eight if I put down the engineer and move this into the front line, he's gonna have to spend the one credit to ping this off, which means like if he goes to like patriotic firestorm or something, or somehow buff up his artillery, it won't be able to hit my uh unit. Yeah, see, so. He's got to decide how does he want to trade in for this. So he's going to trade like that. Which is fine by me. Because this means I'll get to trade away some of his stuff. I guess we five-year plan first and see what happens. So, I could just actually just sickle this. 
and the 845th will stay there. And if he wants to, if he wants to like play down a Katusha and kill it off, that's fine by me. Okay, he's gonna do that. Okay. I have to play this very carefully, but this might be the turn where it's a good idea to uh, to go below 10. If I red dawn this, hmm, I could red dawn this. I could red dawn the uh, artillery piece. And then we play out our type one, which allows us to kill that off. And then we play sunrise and that. Now, this is a bit of a risk, I will admit, uh, but this does pretty much mean that they have to win a race against me, which I have Great Patriotic Fire, or Patriotic War, if they can't kill me immediately. Which they could, but seemingly it's not likely. They only had, like, four cards in hand, so they don't have enough credits to really, like, keep this up. They're starting to assemble their kill combo. But it's not here yet. So next turn will probably be like Great Patriotic War. I don't know. It it really comes down artillery. Soviet artillery always like comes down to like can you, like outrace them. I guess it just comes down to if they have like ten burst in hand, or something like that. Which if they're playing that tells me no, they aren't exactly. They must still be digging, which gives me time to. Uh, Kind of force a do or die situation here. If I draw a type one off the top, I win. Nope. Okay. I think it's still a good idea to just. I should just push one to the front line. So he's they kind of have to kill me now or they die. Uh there's not really any other option. I don't always like forcing this like win now because like but that's kind of how Soviet artillery plays. It's like can you kill me now? So that's 6 damage, upwards of 6 to 7 damage. So they'd need to play another artillery and then have double patriotic. Okay, that is... Five. And we got him. We won that race. But you can see how quickly that deck can turn... Like, this deck can turn the corner. Like, we, we counter-pressured, you know, we got below 10 and we just completely dominated the board and... Thankfully got a little lucky in winning the race. Like, if he had an another Firestorm there, he could have killed me. But, uh... He had already used one to deal with some of my stuff earlier, so... Bit of a close game. Most of the games often are quite close because you're often so low on life, but... Uh, that was a win.